Hi guys, it's July 24, 2018. I wish I could have posted this video last night, but I just couldn't. Tried. But, um, boy, this Jeremiah, Disciples of Jesus Christ thing, it sure gave us a lot of material that we could work with to understand ourselves a little bit better. But, without going into all of that, I just want to say that Jeremiah has posted videos of his apartment having been burned down and this is good enough for me he's walking through his apartment he shows his daughter's name on the wall uh, a, a daily planner with his name and you know understanding how so many people make these presumptions and I read comments I don't know if it was underneath Jeremiah's video or my video people claiming that he's still lying you know that it's not his apartment or we've got the technology now for people to put up videos you know claiming all these kinds of things look uh, I think we need to ease up a little bit you know here he is it, with the I guess it's maybe the apartment manager a maintenance guy after he walks out of his apartment um, these presumptions that came out immediately presumptions of someone they didn't even know that he was lying I said initially that I believed him there wasn't anything that I picked up from Jeremiah Jeremiah that he was lying. And that's the reason I posted the video. He also posted this, a message from he and his wife. And he mentions me and says that I blasted him. I didn't blast you. I took issue with the raising of the amount from 15 to 25,000. You know, look, I also see people who, because you do one thing that isn't necessarily a lie, they take that one thing and expand it out, and it's everything about that person. And that could not be further from the truth. We all have our issues that, yes, we got early on in our dysfunctional homes. And as adults, if we don't resolve them, they continue throughout our entire life and they manifest differently for everyone. So, for me, it wasn't that he was lying about the fire, I didn't understand the raising of the amount. And not knowing him, I, my feeling was, uh, and I can't even say that it's true, what motivated him, he says in this video, that a pastor told him to raise the amount. that whether a pastor told you to raise the amount or not you can't put the responsibility on the pastor you did it you take full responsibility for it so um, wow guys I'm having a hard time I can't even remember what I was saying. But our issues do manifest differently. You know, my issue was not outright lying. Did I grow up in this incredibly unhealthy environment and become a healthy adult? No. So my issues just manifested differently. And 
lying outright was not an issue of mine. But did I lie? Absolutely. I lived the pretense that we all live. I lied to myself about who I was. And all of that had to be worked through to stop doing it. And when we don't work through these issues that we have, we end up causing an awful lot of harm, damage. We break down trust. So when you're a trustworthy human being, when what you say is what you do, you are a trustworthy human being when you don't change the agreement that you have made with others and without any kind of explanation. You're not a trustworthy human being if you cannot take responsibility for what you have done wrong. And You know, if you're not matching what you say and what you do, then you have this disintegration within your own self, and you need to work to integrate it so that when you speak, your word can be trusted. You know, we don't even talk about these kinds of things here. The most important things in life. Americans just, it's like off their radar. And I remember times, you know, with um, several people, I tried to have conversations about the importance of our word. And I was laughed at. Yeah, I was judged as, oh, Carol, you're so heavy. No. One of the reasons why I brought it up is because I was facing a lot of people in my life that were saying things but not actually doing what they said. Talking a good game but living the opposite of what they spoke. And it became more and more clear to me that unless people got to a point where what they said and what they did matched, that trust would never be established in the community. You know, the gossip that was going on and all this. But nobody cared. No one cared about doing anything to establish trust in their own community because there was such a disintegration and there was no real genuine connection between those in the community. They were comfortable, they were living their life, and that's all that mattered. Well, you're going to end up being somebody who does cause an awful lot of damage. In this community, in the cyber world, it requires more of us. It requires of us to, to come out publicly when we're posting videos. If we make a mistake, we've got to take responsibility for that mistake. If we um, you know, are talking about an issue and we got something wrong, that we come out and say, okay, I got it wrong. It requires that when we're asking for donations for help, that we, we, without being asked, and that doesn't mean in the emergency situation, um, and it doesn't mean that until you can actually verify something, well, if you can't verify it right then and there, that you verify it as soon as you can. In the comments that I got from people, he should have been filming this fire. It's what I would have done. So you think what you 
do, everybody should do? I'm telling you, when you are in emergency situations, you're not thinking clearly, and taking out your cell phone to watch your apartment getting burned down, uh, I don't think it's very much on your mind. And this idea of people saying, well, this is what I would have done. So you expect everybody to do what you would have done? That will cause an awful lot of harm. So, um, it's really unfortunate that we got to this place. But in this video, both you and your wife clearly are upset that you have to prove that your apartment got burned down. Well, sorry, but that is the world in which we live in, and you shouldn't take that personally. Trust has been so shattered by all of the liars and the scammers that that is the only way that we can reestablish trust. Getting upset at people who question whether or not that fire actually happened, you're going to be causing more harm. And when you take personally something that is not personal, requiring verification now, I have stated for six years, we have to be proactive in reestablishing trust. So, document everything, trust, you know, verify your need, but don't even wait, you know, for people to question. And if people do question, then you say, I will in a certain amount of time, which is what you did with me, Jeremiah, and I was absolutely fine to wait. Because I do understand, you know, when you are in an emergency situation and, you know, suddenly um, what you owned is gone, you, there's so much going on. You can't expect somebody, you know, to do immediately what you want them to do in that situation. So could we ease up on that? Um, and, you know, then there were people who were claiming that he had all of these GoFundMe accounts. I only found one and it was for $85. It was a GoFundMe for his channel. Other people have said, Carol, start a GoFundMe account. You know, that that really should not uh, indicate that the person's not trustworthy. But on the GoFundMe that I found, there was $85. He mentions in this video, Jeremy Payne, Jeremiah Payne. I had a friend who had a son named Jeremy, so sorry. Jeremiah Payne. You'll come up with a lot of Jeremiah Paynes. I've, I have a very common name. So, you Google my full name, you'll come up with an awful lot of people with the same name. But because you don't understand that, you'll think it's me, and then you'll claim whatever it is that you found on this person with the same name. And you'll think it's me. So, people have said, you know, that he was arrested. Whether he was arrested or not, I don't, it, that, that to me, people are getting arrested for nothing, anything, jaywalking. Um, so that to me does not indicate that the person is not trustworthy. And there are people who claim that people can't change. Well, I think those people who claim that are people who have never done anything to try to change their own self. There are people who claim, unless you have accepted Jesus as your Savior, you can't change. That's not true. What is true is if you have the courage to face yourself in the mirror 
If you have the courage to take responsibility for the behaviors that have hurt other people. And I will tell you, it's been my experience, until you get to the point where you actually feel remorse for the behaviors that have hurt other people, you won't change. Until you get to the place where you're thinking, I don't want to cause anybody any pain, hurt, harm, nothing. You will continue. Now, I'm not saying that you got to get to a place of being an absolutely perfect human being because nobody's perfect and we slip up. But we've got to stand accountable for the slip ups, always. So that is the only way that we can reestablish trust here. And without that foundation of trust, we are absolute, we have rendered life meaningless and we're going to get nowhere ever in our attempts to create a healthy society. Trust is fundamental. It is the foundation of every healthy relationship, but I see that most people could care less about trust. As long as they're fine, that's all that matters. So in this video, uh, Jeremiah mentions, you know, that there was an arrest or whatever, but then it was found out that it wasn't Jeremiah. I believe that. And just because I saw and had a visceral response to the raising of the amount, it doesn't mean that I, I then carry that you know, all the way to the end of everything that he says. Oh, he's lying, he's lying. No, I don't. Um, what I really took issue with was you posted a video and you were asking for help because you wanted to put a roof over your daughter's head. I didn't have any problem with your daughter in the background. To those who were you know, claiming that he was using his daughter, exploiting his daughter to get donations. I said in the video that I posted, I don't have children, but if I had children, I know that there's nothing I wouldn't do to protect my children, especially in an emergency situation. And, you know, that, that's the bottom line for me. So, it is why I donated. to put that roof over your daughter's head. Now, I will say again, I live stressed all the time because of money. So, when I'm donating to somebody, I, I, I do need them to be honest. It's, it's not that I need the proof immediately, but I don't want to be betrayed. regardless of the need of money, I don't want to be betrayed. And I feel, I feel somewhat betrayed by your raising the amount and here you're claiming you did it because a pastor told you to do it. You did it and you need to take responsibility for it and not pass that responsibility over to a pastor. And you left this comment underneath the video that I posted and now it's gone, so I'm not even going to presume that you deleted it. Look, I get accused of deleting comments, and I didn't. So, comments disappear, okay. But if you deleted it, you deleted it for a reason. You deleted it because you didn't want people to see what you wrote. I captured that. You wrote, I'm heading to the fire department now to settle this, and then I will take it off 
further off camera, I don't know. And I dropped it from 15,000 to 10,000, so you people will shut the hell up. You know, this, this comment reflects an awful lot of the issues that you have. Yes, when we live our lives, and there are people that have done that work, and that work actually bumps us up to have this higher consciousness. I am not saying I have a high consciousness, but I did get to a point where I recognized, wow, there are different levels of consciousness. When I was at that low level of consciousness, I had no clue. So when you do get up to a higher level, you begin to see issues. When you've resolved some of those issues that you've had, you begin to see the issues that other people have. And they sometimes come screaming out of the person that you're in front of, or they come screaming out of a comment that you left. You don't want to take responsibility, Jeremiah, for the things that you do wrong. I am not saying that you are wrong, that you're a bad person, that you're horrible, that no. We all do things wrong and we all need to take responsibility for it. You're in a group with an awful lot of people who just never take responsibility for anything that they do wrong and if you are a disciple of Jesus Christ then you need to start looking at yourself. The raising of the amount, I didn't know why you did it. I made this and I don't know what your issues are and what motivates you or whatever. But my visceral response was you saw these donations coming in and you wanted more. Now, when you lose everything, uh, it's just hard to live that way. When I asked for donations for help to bring my stuff back from Massachusetts or bring it down to South Carolina, I didn't wait. I filmed the truck. I filmed all my stuff in in the moving truck and when I got back to South Carolina I posted it immediately. That was the help that I wanted. That was the help that people donated to help me and that was it. I didn't up the ante for something else. And I didn't up the ante and not even tell them. You upped the ante. You changed the agreement. That video that you first posted to get a roof over the head of your daughter, that was the agreement and that's why people donated. It's why I donated. So when you up it and hear in this comment, you're saying, well, first you say that you shut the hell up, okay, because you are all just jealous, which, wow, don't understand that. Um, that you need to take a look at, at why you even said jealous, because what are we jealous of? But if any of you really didn't believe me, or you say you dropped it from 15 to 10,000, it's at 15,000. It's not at 10. Uh, but if any of you didn't believe me, that's your problem. No. And you should know this because you're on YouTube and you know that trust is gone. It is not our problem and you should not get upset that people have asked you to verify. It is your problem that you think and get upset by people asking you to prove that there was a fire. We all have to prove ourselves today, bottom line. 
and we should all be wanting to prove ourselves. Because when you're of that mindset, you are somebody who's trying to reestablish trust. So you're getting upset at things. You're, you're, and I sense that that was coming from your wife too. You're blaming everybody else and not taking any responsibility for some of the ways in which you've handled this. Um, he says, since you all want to act like I am lying about what I say and you want to act like you know what the value of stuff was inside my home, you asked for a roof over your daughter's head, which meant that you needed first, last, maybe security. I don't know how it works in Kentucky. I think it's not all that like it is up north where I live, but it meant getting you an apartment. $15,000, which I didn't, I had no, I had nothing, no judgment or anything about that amount. But then to change it, 25. 15000 is a substantial amount, and that was an amount that absolutely could have put you back on your feet. But then you're opening it to twenty-five, and here in this comment you say that you had more than 15000 in your studio. I did not donate to you, Jeremiah, to for you to replace the equipment in your studio. But as I said, I dropped it to 10,000. No, it's at 15, last I checked. Um, but I really do pray every one of you get to find out, as I did, that the people on YouTube are some judgmental pricks. Yes, they are. There's an awful lot of judgmental pricks. And you left me another comment with your telephone number and said that I guess anybody can call you. Oh God, I don't know where it is now. Um, oh, maybe if any of you truly have a problem with me, call or text me. Uh, but y'all are just in internet bullies. No, not everybody was an internet bully. It is absolutely essential that we are aware of how we communicate. So, we need to be direct and straightforward and honest and clear. And when we are not, we cause problems. Not everybody is an internet bully. I don't consider myself an internet bully. I am somebody who when I see something and that something affects the entire community, I don't know, I just feel that I need to speak my mind on what's going on. Because you saw me as blasting you in this uh, video. I don't feel I blasted you. Because you were not lying about the fire, it doesn't mean that everything you do on forward is going to be perfect and Jeremiah, you do take things personally. And I have sensed that you have a hard time taking responsibility. If you are a disciple of Jesus Christ, you will continue to live this way. And you're not a disciple. Not until you can begin to face your own self in the mirror, work on those issues that you have, and begin to accept responsibility for what you do wrong, you will not. You will not be the kind of trustworthy people, a uh, trustworthy person where people can count on your word. 
That's the bottom line. So you strike out at all of us wanting us to shut the hell up. Uh, you're calling everybody an internet bully. And I do take issue with that because while underneath the comment section of many of my videos, you got the internet bullies. But there's an awful lot of my subscribers who are not internet bullies. There are subscribers who questioned, who, because trust is gone, they have a hard time trusting people. That needs to be understood. And there were subscribers who donated to you. So you changing that agreement, because I reposted your video, that meant, and I think I wrote in the description box, you know, that you needed help, and Christians in particular help another Christian. You didn't do it directly. You didn't ask me to do it. I did it on my own. But because of your post, you started all of this. There's a chain reaction. And my reposting, that meant for me that I believed you and you needed to keep your word, but you didn't in raising that amount, in wanting that amount, you know, to replace everything, all of your belongings. You know, if I ask for donations, you know, to, to get my belongings from Great Barrington, bring them down to South Carolina, up the ante, and didn't tell anybody I was upping the ante because I wanted my entire life to be replaced. Well, that would take an awful lot of money, but that would not be an honest thing that I was doing. So the upping of the amount, sorry, Please, understand me. I am not blasting you. I am not. I understand that the majority of Americans are truly messed up. There are issues manifesting in every which way. And I do believe that it is our responsibility for the people in our life. And when, you know, we encounter these things on in the cyber world that we try to lift one another up, and you know what? In lifting one another up, sometimes, oh, it hurts. And it feels like an attack or a blast, or but it's not. Be a man. Stand accountable for what you have done wrong here. And then begin to be very clear when you communicate to other people, whether in the cyber world or in real life. And when you are very clear, and when you say something and it matches what you do, you begin to act in the world as a human being that can be trusted. Until we get to that point, we can. So while you didn't lie about the fire, which I never thought you did, you did things that left me questioning what was going on. You changed your intent and you never told anybody about it. So I hope that you can take what I say and maybe consider some of what I say. You know, right now I see you still as, and I know an awful lot of people who can't ever give up. Don't ever say anything about me. Don't call me out. Don't, uh-uh. And if you do, I will attack because I don't understand 
that I, I'm at that low level of consciousness, which is all ego driven and anything that you say about me, I've got to protect my ego and I've got to make everybody else responsible for what I do. And I've got to, you know, claim that you're wrong. You've got to shut the hell up. Everybody's an internet bully. And I did nothing wrong. And it doesn't matter if the wrong was big or small. We just need to clear up what we do wrong. And there's no, no human being that just never does anything wrong. But there's an awful lot who just cannot, they just don't have the courage to say, I was wrong. And for those in your life, for those that you may have betrayed, not intentionally, but just due to the inconsistency of that behavior, it, those words, I was wrong, means that you have respect for those in your life, those of us here. When you can't do that, you are all about yourself and you're not a disciple of Jesus Christ. When you can stand accountable, that's when you begin to, well, grow up, <laughs> mature, and be the man that you're supposed to be, that, that you could be. The refusal to take responsibility, we do see it across the board, and it keeps adults children. So I don't say any of this to you, Jeremiah, to beat you down, to hurt you in any way. That's so not the point. The point is, that you do have things to work on. And as you well know, so do an awful lot of us because we actually demonstrate who we are right smack here on these screens. And he is absolutely right about the internet bullies and that we do have an awful lot of YouTube pricks. I agree with you. So, it's up to everybody. It's your choice. You know, you can look at what you do in the world or not. But if you don't look at what you do, then you can't be a part of the solution. You will always be a part of the problem. And sorry for going on once again.